What's up everybody? Welcome to Built for Life. I'm Joel. If this is your first time checking out this channel, we work with my Chepoco 5 Pro CNC machine to make all sorts of cool stuff, do metalworking, build giant tables, and uh, in general just have fun. But today we're checking out the Rikon 2 inch 12 volt sander polisher. See in a recent tools video that I did, uh, I highlighted this kit that I found on Amazon and absolutely uh, enjoy it. And I use it to um, upgrade my die grinder so that I can do detail sand sanding with it. It is just a two inch uh, adapter for two inch hook and loop sandpaper. Well, all that was to just kind of avoid purchasing uh, a sander that's been getting profiled a lot is this the Rikon 2 inch sander polisher and I've recently gotten a chance to uh, purchase one with a heads up from Matt over at 731 Woodworks if you follow his uh, tools uh, page he gives uh, a lot of deal alerts and stuff like that so I saw one of those deal alerts and was able to pick this one up for a good price on acmetools.com and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to check it out, do a little unboxing, and talk about what I've learned about it. Now, just to let you know what it all comes with, we're going to do a little bit of an unboxing. I have already used this, so everything is a little bit dirty. But it comes in this uh, plastic case. Think Dremel case. You know, nothing special. Just a, a plastic case where, you know, uh, things are barely held into the into their spot. Uh, it comes with a charger, one single 12 volt battery, a two inch backing pad with a hook on it, and three polishing pads, a foam, a terry cloth, and this like furry one. Uh, and then of course the sander itself. Now, like I said, I did have an opportunity to use this recently and test it and Though I haven't used it extensively, there are some things that I picked up on it that were surprising, uh, that I really liked, and uh, a few things that just weren't that great. And uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, we're going to start off with, on a happy note, with what I do like. All right, so what I do like about this tool, uh, I think it is the obvious, and it's why I purchased it, is because it is portable. There are no cords. No air hoses that would run this die grinder. Uh, it is just a easy to grab portable sander that I can take and uh, do detail sanding. Uh, whereas if I were using a, a larger palm sander or something like that, I'm likely going to have a cord or in this case for the die grinder, an air hose. And uh, that makes this also much quieter because I don't have an air compressor running and Honestly, uh, palm sanders are, you know, A, not a detail sander, and much louder. So that I do love. Uh, the second thing is, which I was actually really surprised about when I, when I bought this, I was very worried that it wasn't going to have enough torque because it's a very small package, and sanding takes a decent amount of power to, you know, take wood off. That's what you're doing. So I had an opportunity to use it um, and doing some sanding on, actually on a, an aircraft and I did some torture testing on a scrap piece of walnut, basically trying to bog it down and stop it. And now if I put all my attention on stopping it, you know, just like probably any tool out there, I can stop this thing. Um, however, if you're actually sanding and just bearing down really hard, uh, it, you're not stopping it. It actually just started walking all over the place. And if you're doing that, you're basically destroying whatever you're trying to sand. You're definitely not smoothing it out any. Uh, so super surprising on how much torque this thing had um, and kind of cleared up the one thing that I was kind of skeptical about. But the ability to be so portable and uh, get in tight spaces and keep me from having to hand sand things is what made me uh, purchase this uh, item because it's some of the trays that I make, uh, you know, you're not going to get a five inch palm sander 
uh, in this recess or in some of these tight grooves. Um, so it's perfect for that. All the small stuff that I bring off of the um, off the CNC machine, there's a, a lot of just detail sanding. Uh, and I hope to be able to experiment with this a little bit more and uh, yeah, use it a lot more. So that's what I do like, the, the uh, portability and the torque. Now to get into what I've found so far that I really don't like, and that is just the power switch. I don't know why they made the power switch the way they did, but they did. Uh, so to turn this thing on, you have to hold the power button for approximately three seconds, and then this light will come on. And then you, at that point, you can press the plus button to make it start rotating. And then you can sand, and then once you're ready to turn it off, you have to hold the power button for approximately three seconds again to make it turn off. Why they did that, I don't know. It's just, it's kind of annoying. I would much rather have seen a, maybe like a dial setting, uh, like on other sanders, and then a switch, whether it be a toggle switch or even a trigger or something like that. It would have been good. Um, and that's, honestly, that's the only thing that I think Rikon did wrong, right? Uh, and the other points that I have to make about it are just, I think really just kind of go along with the package. So it's a small package. And one of the things that's bad about that is going to be battery life. It doesn't have that great of a battery life. Uh, I did sand with it for probably 20, 30 minutes, you know, with no issue. Battery didn't go dead uh, and it was fine. Um, I even without charging, I took it and I did my torture test. So actually when it was, uh, when I was sanding on that walnut, the battery probably wasn't at 100%, and it still did great. So I have used this thing probably 45 minutes of just straight sanding with it, and the battery is start is you know starting to go down. But I don't think that you can expect much more of that from such a small package with um, this much torque. I mean, if you look at it and you kind of look through the air vents, the motor takes up this much of the body. I mean, it's a pretty sizable motor, and then this is obviously the, the gearing, and then the battery is the rest of it. So you're not going to get much battery life out of such a small battery. It's only 12 volts. It doesn't tell me the amp hours, but it just I think it just kind of goes along with it, and I knew that going into it. Um, the second thing that it's not really a negative, it's just, a, it, it is what it is, is the versatility. So this comes with one two inch sanding pad with hook on it. Uh, and that's what you're buying. That's what you're getting. Something like this die grinder, you have the ability, like with the kit that I highlighted on my tools video, I can just buy a two inch sanding thing I can do all the two inch sanding that this can do I can also put 3m pads on it for sanding with scotch bright nylon bristle even wire brushes can go on this die grinder cut off wheels and everything else this thing is very very versatile that's what it was built for um, but there's also things that come, come along with this, like an air hose and a, and a loud compressor, right? So, but I did do some research and to try to help in this area. And what I, what I found out is that the shaft coming out of this is threaded at M10 1.25. So I started looking for other attachments for M10 1.25. And I did come across some more sanding polishing pads, uh, a three inch, a two inch and then what they call a one inch but it's actually uh, like 1.1 or 30 millimeter so the sanding the one inch sanding disc didn't don't quite fit on this however it was pretty easy to just uh, put some loop back paper on this and then just cut a circle around it even leaving it a little bit wide actually helped in uh, some of the swooping areas of the tray because it kind of gets that curved section so 
was actually kind of cool. Um, but I mean, that's, again, that's what you're buying. It's a sander polisher. It's not a, a cutoff wheel. It's nothing else. If you want that, then you're probably in the market for a die grinder and not this tool. All right, to bring it all home and sum it all up, should you buy this tool? I don't know. Uh, I bought this tool because I had a specific reason for using it. I am power limited in this shop, and this allows me to continue sanding while I'm still running my air, uh, my dust collection and my CNC, and I can keep on working while the, while the CNC is running. So perfect. I have I make little trays like this that need fine detail sanding, so it works perfect. I have a reason to have a small, dedicated detail sander, and that's what I bought. If you have a task or job that you think a small detail sander is exactly what you need, then so far what I've seen from this tool, it's a fine tool. Um, build quality seems pretty awesome. Uh, the company is out of Andover, Massachusetts, and they, the tools are manufactured in China, but everything just feels sturdy about it. You know, it doesn't feel like a, uh, you know, cheap Harbor Freight Walmart kind of tool. It just, it feels like it was uh, maybe made with some care. And I'm going to continue to use it. And if my opinion of all this changes, then I'll let you know. Uh, but so far off uh, my initial impressions, I think it's going to work great in my shop. Uh, and that's pretty much it. It's a niche sander for a niche job. And if that's what you need, then I think it's a candidate. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, if you have any questions about things that you saw in this video, there are links in the description uh, to items. Uh, including some of the stuff you saw in the background and videos. Uh, and if you like what you saw, consider hitting that thumbs up button. And it don't cost you a thing. And if you want to see more, then consider hitting that subscribe button and joining us on a regular basis. Other than that, we'll catch you on the next one.